to abandon everything they ever previously believed in order to oppose Donald Trump. Um, <laughs> we'll get to the never Trumpers soon enough and the hundreds of millions of dollars wasted on them. Uh, look, Donald Trump won this on policy and personality. I don't want to be remiss here. He it talked about energy independence, manufacturing, an economy where everybody is working, no new foreign wars, getting out of the entanglements we currently have, respecting and resourcing law enforcement, border patrol, military. And by the way, friends, we don't get those policies without that personality. What did we hear during the Republican primaries? I want Donald Trump's policies without his personality. Good luck with that. <laughs> you don't get this strength and this resolve and this toughness. You don't get those policies without that. <laughs> but I want to say this. It's on this phone that Huma Abedin placed a call 2.30 a.m. on November 9th, 2016. And on the other line was Secretary Clinton to concede the race to Donald Trump on my phone. I handed it to him. And I said to Vice President-elect Mike Pence, make sure Hillary actually concedes. She did. And President Trump was gracious to them, too. Yeah. They came to the luncheon at the Capitol after the inauguration. The Obamas and the Clintons were there. I was there to see it myself. And then something just changed. The Washington Post said, let's impeach him at noon, two minutes after he inaugurated. Melania wrote about this in her book. So, Harold, I hear you. I hope everybody can unify. But I got to tell you, my friend, I think it starts with your party and not mine. Fair enough. They, gotta, please, they, please, they please, have please. this guy in a courtroom. He's not an indoor cat. I get it. They have him. They had him in the courtroom. They have him impeached. They have him. And whether people think that was justified or not, now is a good time to respect the will of the people. Forget about us. The I, will of the people. I agree. I'm just saying, be a gracious winner. Let's move the country yes, forward. I, I agree. And I know you. I'm just. That was my only point. My, I had a gracious was, winner today when I talked to him. I really did. He's known for a while. He's gonna. I, I wrote a piece on FoxNews.com October 11th saying he's gonna have a narrow landslide. I think he's felt that for a while, but he wanted to go and earn it. And I even think the people around him have to be gracious too. I think he would. But I, I, well, I don't know the political issue. Yeah, that's a different question. The people around him have to be gracious as that's well. That's a different question. We can always hope. Good luck up from the top. I just want to say how much money was spent on this election. $15.9 billion for the bill. Wow. B, if you spent $1,000 a day for 2,740 years, that would be a billion dollars. It was 16 times that. What has been spent on every race, the presidency, the whole deal. $16 billion. And here we are. What is that, a check you can write to for every American? What did you say? About $50. About $50. I just want to say, every presidential race has a medium. You know, you go back to television, cable. Yeah. Um, this was, in some ways, a, a podcast experience of a campaign. And those are free to go on podcasts. And you wonder how much of that money really needed to be spent when there's a lot of ways to reach people, but I think it's really interesting and something we'll be talking about a lot in terms of the reach of these endorsements. You know what I'm struck by the Logan final and Musk and the rest the of them. The final ads where he they were they, excellent. They, they talked about you yep. know, making America great again, but then ending with the assassination attempt and that fist in the air, the iconic image and the fight, fight, yep. fight. Absolutely. Warrior president. And it worked. Yep. Right. Yeah, the toughest son of a gun we ever saw. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the last note we see in that ad, and I think, you know, I think, well, whatever you think of the guy, you got to admire that. Yeah. I mean, if any, I mean, the, the adversity that he's faced, everything we've seen in in other presidencies and other political figures who've gone on through all kinds of trouble, did, are pale in comparison to what, what he's been put through. Yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's time for his enemies to stop it. Not only that, but the energy that he has. Is truly amazing. He's the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> Let's check in with Aisha Hazi. Speaking of the Energizer Bunny at Trump headquarters uh, in West Palm, uh, Aisha, this has been a big night all night long. I'm sure it's really getting fever pitch.